friend and I were out riding bikes through our neighborhood when all of a sudden a police car just pulls up alongside of us. Two cops hop out, point their guns at us and tell us to freeze. We were terrified. I remember he told me that he was no longer allowed to date me because I was black. I was about six years old in the first grade and I remember one of my white classmates coming up to me in school and saying, why do all you black kids have such strange names? They told me that they were not allowed to play with the N-word. When I was walking to the fitness center in the mall at five o'clock in the morning, a Culver City police officer followed me for minutes, pulled his gun on me with no reason because he felt that I was potentially looking to rob or loot stores in the mall. When I told him I was an attorney, he didn't believe me, he put me in handcuffs, and within minutes, at least 10 to 15 more officers were there with me in handcuffs, me telling them what my bar number was, and none of it mattered. I can't watch the George Floyd video anymore, and the same with Ahmaud Arbery. And Breonna Taylor's murder, it, it, it just causes a visceral pain. What made it real for me was when Trayvon Martin died and I asked my father, what would you have done if you had two boys instead of two girls? And he said to me, I would have raised them in another country. As a black man, I'm fearful for myself. As a father, I'm fearful for my children. For me, it just makes me really exhausted. It's a constant reminder that like, I'm not really welcome here. We never get to escape the realities of being black in America no matter what. And so you, you deal with them as they come. It, 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 it's almost like an obstacle course. And what many don't know is that we leave the constant pain, the fear, the dread in our homes when we enter our workspaces and do our jobs. Having to show up for Zoom calls after you just read a terrible tragedy like a death of George Floyd and then having to smile and be focused it's such an emotional thing. It is so stressful. Racism is a legacy that we all inherited. And I am here to tell my colleagues that you have the permission. In fact, it's expected of you to fight it. To my colleagues, I'd just like to say, educate yourself on this issue of systemic racism because it's not just police brutality. It manifests itself in all facets of life. Be empathetic, be human. So let's start there. Let's start with the humanity of it all and really seek to understand each other's experiences. I say the first step is having uncomfortable conversations, what we call brave conversations. When you hear concepts or phrases that you don't understand or that may bother you or cause you to feel resistant, Black Lives Matter, structural racism, white privilege, if you don't understand it or it bothers you, do some research. Really dig into it with an open mind. Go have a conversation and sincerely ask one of us. And it is encouraging that we have platforms such as this to express ourselves and give people an idea of the fear that we have just being African American. And we as a global company can continue to, to lead the way in, in tearing down what I believe are harmful stereotypes and characteristics that have been seared into the conscience of the world. We want the same things anybody else wants. We want happiness. We want a good life. We want great relationships with our family and friends. We want hope for the future for our kids. I would love to be able to just have the same life experience, the same opportunities as someone who does not have my skin color. But hopefully this is a reason for you to speak up in the future and be like, this isn't right. It isn't always on my, my black male coworker, my black female coworker to speak up on injustices. It's on you to speak up on it as well. We just ask that you become our allies, that you march with us, that you walk with us, arm in arm. Remember when we all together proclaimed Wakanda forever. This is what it looks like.